Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to Face to Face. I'm your host, Dennis Ward. Our guests this week are three of the four commissioners for the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. My pleasure to welcome Chief Commissioner Marianne Buller, Commissioner Michelle Audette, and Commissioner Brian Aylfson. On December 8, 2015, the Government of Canada announced it was establishing an independent national inquiry to investigate the high number of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. It wasn't until late May 2017 that uh, families and survivors began telling their truths. Under the extension provided to the inquiry, a final report is expected by April 2019. Commissioners, thank you all very much for being here, and uh, I'd like to start with some of the, the tragic news that broke mm. while uh, in Winnipeg for the institutional hearings and the suspicious death of Mary Madeline Yellowback, and uh, just wondering you know, what impact that has uh, on the inquiry in a, a city that you're in at that time. Well, I think I can speak for all of us. It was. Uh, a very vivid reminder of the importance of our work and our, a reminder also of our commitment to our work. Uh, all too often we hear these tragedies as we're doing our work mm -hmm. and I think it just inspires us to work harder and, and deepens our commitment to the work that we are doing. And if I can add also, it was important for us that, yes, we were four in uh, this journey when we came to your place here, but it was important that one of us, uh, we go meet with the family and just, just being there for them and uh, listen if they wanted to speak to us. So we did that and also uh, ma making sure that even if we're stranger to them or people that they don't know, that uh, we care and their daughter matters. And the sad part is that at every hearing, we have to do that. Commissioner Ailson, is it you know, frustrating uh, when these things continue to happen as the inquiry continues to cross the country? Sure, it's frustrating, but it's just it's a reminder that we need to keep going with this very important work and and get the important recommendations out there to ensure that governments make the necessary changes so that we can start ending the violence against Indigenous women and girls. So it reinforces the need to get this work done. Do you feel, uh, having met with families now for more than a year, uh, that expectations are high here? Very high. Very, very high. Uh, for personal and professional reason because we stay connected with them. We still communicate or we s still do ceremonies with them or cry with them and it's and we hear the, the frustration or the no response uh, even though they share with us or didn't mm -hmm. and uh, that's my biggest biggest I would say uh, hope that uh, we will be able to make a little or a big change with this inquiry but what I say to the family me too I have high expectation the report is important the recommendation is important but you media how you will handle that after the work is done how the citizen how the governments how our leadership will take those recommendations and make sure that they honor it because we will be free moccasin after that and we will walk along with you but the responsibility is for all of us. Commissioner Buller, are there fears of not being able to meet those expectations? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, we take our work as really uh, beyond work. What we're doing is really a uh, I don't even know how to, I can't find the words to describe it. Uh, it's so important uh, to not only uh, the families and survivors, but to all Canadians, and now uh, to an international audience who are watching what we're doing. Uh, this is a sacred responsibility, and we, uh, we expect uh, a lot of ourselves. We demand a lot of ourselves in the work that we do. Commissioner Olson, uh, any worries or fears for yourself? There's a, a lot of pressure, no doubt, on the, the commissioners here. Sure, no. Uh, we've uh, heard, I think, recently from 
over uh, 1,700 family members and survivors who have shared very powerful truths with mm -hmm. us. So we have this sacred responsibility to carry out this work and, and formulate the recommendations. And uh, you know, although we're hearing from experts and uh, institutional witnesses this week, I think the families and survivors are the true experts and uh, we have this incredible gift that's been given to us of their truths that we can formulate into recommendations going forward. But these are institutional hearings right now but there are there is testimony still going on right with families in the cities that you all visit? Yes, uh, as we speak uh, we're hearing from families and survivors about their truths and I, I just want to add that uh, we believe and it's the foundation of our work that our people, all of us, know what our problems are and we also know what the solutions are. Mm -hmm. And we have great faith in them. The hearings in Winnipeg have focused on the, the child welfare system and likely for good reason given the, uh, the number of kids in care here in the province, the highest in the country and, and nearly 90% of them, of that 11,000, are, are Indigenous. Uh, you know, as, as Respected child advocate uh, Cindy Blackstock put it, there is a, a direct link between uh, the child welfare system and, and missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Are there, is, is there new things you're hearing this week or are we hearing things that we know? Well, for us, I'll speak a little bit about that, that it's something that we know, but the importance also of this mandate is to make sure that every Canadian hears our knowledge, passion, frustration, or the way we are facing life today. So that part is also crucial in the work we do. But I have to be frank also that during the hearings, yes, we're listening from uh, experts or people who have a knowledge and a passion on this uh, uh, subject or issue. But also at night, we go visit organization or we go on the street, meet the people mm -hmm. where they didn't come to the hearings, but we go to them. And this is where also still again <coughs> struck me that there's so much to do. So yes, we're still learning. And if I could add, many of the things we're hearing this week, we've heard from family members and survivors about what the problems are with the child welfare system and what solutions are. Mm -hmm. And this week we're hearing it from a slightly different perspective from people who have worked with these systems or academics who have studied these systems. So it's, it's helping fill in the, the puzzle. Commissioner Buller, are, are you hearing new things? Or are we uncovering things here this week? I think what I'm learning this week is um, not only what the problems are, but hearing from grassroots organizations, for example, service providers, about things that are working. Uh, because there's some great uh, answers to uh, problems, uh, great services that are being provided. So that uh, we're learning about the other part of our mandate, which is to find out what's working right. to reduce violence. So there are some great programs and services out there. I'm going to uh, just step aside for a quick minute for us to take a break here, and then we'll continue the conversation on Face to Face with three of the four commissioners for the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. Welcome back to Face to Face and our guests this week are three of the commissioners for the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. Uh, uh, one of the commissioners early on in the process was among uh, many who for various reasons have stepped aside from the inquiry. Uh, Commissioner Audet, you also considered uh, stepping aside. Uh, why was that something that you considered and what kept you on? Well, the reason it was the biggest, you know, disappointment that when we know many of us uh, fought for 40 years, you know, women and men uh, for a long, long time to have this inquiry, I joined my voice and love uh, 18 years ago. And uh, so it's, I still believe that uh, we had a historical moment here power to compel and uh, not many in, uh, inquiry was given to indigenous people to have that power. I think it's the first time that also we have all provinces and territory that gave a, an order in council to work with the inquiry. So a mix of uh, my passionate advocacy 
but also a mix of this role being a, a commissioner. And after calling many people, receiving uh, many advice from uh, families or friends or people that I met over this uh, journey, this mandate, uh, some even kicked my, I won't say the rest, but, or tap in my shoulder. So we cried together. And after a ceremony, it was like, OK, I'll be able to sign a report. If I step down, I won't be able. Right. Being here, I'll say my truth, and I say the frustration, and propose, along with the voices of the families and survivor, recommendation. Was it the, the lack of uh, the extension that you looked for? Of that course. I forgot to mention that. Thank you. Yeah, we asked 24 months. In the history, it's nothing. When you're facing that tragedy, it's, it's, come on, we have an opportunity here. So we didn't get it. So uh, I reacted, but now we will try our best. But I know we're missing a lot if we, because we didn't have what we asked. So you got, people will have to continue, and, and I'll work with them. Chief Commissioner Buller, we're a few months into, uh, since you've received the, the extension. Um, what has been the impact of, of not getting the extension you had asked for? There have been impacts on many different levels. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, we had to go back to the drawing board and greatly reduce the breadth and depth of the work that we planned to do. For example, we had planned to uh, go into prisons and penitentiaries mm -hmm. to speak to women. We just don't have the time to right. do that now. Uh, we also wanted to be able to spend more time dealing with regional issues because what is important here uh, in Manitoba is uh, different from what's important uh, regarding sources of violence against indigenous, indigenous women and girls in uh, Yukon or in Labrador. So we're not going to be able to touch on those regional differences. Also, uh, of course, it's meant for a lot of our staff that uh, They've, they've really had to make some compromises personally mm -hmm. for what they hope to accomplish. So it's been a, a real uh, blow, a, a great blow to all of us. Commissioner Ailson, uh, concerns uh, of you know, what the recommendations will be uh, given the, the shortened timeline? I'm not so much concerned about the recommendations. I think we are making the best of the limited additional time we have been given. And there's also lots of other reports, and we have our research team that can also assist us uh, mm -hmm. with the information we need to make recommendations. But it would have been nice to have the additional time that we carefully thought out that mm -hmm. we needed to do this job thoroughly. But we will still come up with good recommendations. Commissioner Bullard, it's uh, easy sometimes to get in a, a bubble, I guess, when you're, you're all over the place and, and dealing with this all the time. How do you think the general public, uh, Indigenous and non-Indigenous, have uh, perceived uh, the inquiry so far? Well, it's interesting how the uh, views are changing and, and opening up because, as Commissioner Audette mentioned, so much of our work is educating the public about issues. Mm -hmm. And so now we're hearing from our non-Indigenous partners. Uh, under, they're starting to understand uh, the history of colonization and the effect of colonization on our people. Uh, above and beyond the residential school system. Uh, our own people are beginning to understand more the impacts of uh, intergenerational violence and trauma. This has been a tremendous, tremendous learning process for everyone. And I think uh, where there's knowledge, there's power. I had a, an elder from Thunder Bay contact me this week uh, out of the blue and didn't know we were doing this, but she wanted to raise questions about her concerns. And we've heard it a lot from, from people across the country. And that was with, you know, things felt rushed. And, and the other concern was that um, the aftercare maybe wasn't there. Yeah, very, very rushed for all of us. You were human being and family members, or we have families. Very rushed, and also that we're, we were handled uh, something that it's very emotional, very, very sacred, and very hard. You know, when you lose a loved one or many loved ones, we met families that lost too many people in the same family. And hoping that within two years, you can examine 500 years of oppression, right. discrimination, systemic discrimination and violence mm -hmm. in two years and then propose magic 
for me was rush, 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 and doing hearings every week. Uh, and some, so many people felt between cracks and that I apologize and they didn't deserve that. So there's many things that we have responsibility, but also the way it was set up and it's still set up, whew, it's a challenge, but we have to do it. We have to do it. Commissioner Elson, have you heard concerns or had your own about the aftercare that has been provided for families and survivors? Uh, I have heard concerns, but my understanding is that uh, of the people that we've heard from, family members and survivors that have wanted aftercare, uh, the majority of them have completed aftercare, and we have a number of people that are currently in the process of having that provided, and of yeah. course we have a few people that uh, uh, we've uh, lost contact with, but I know that some of those people slowly we are regaining contact with them to arrange aftercare. Chief Commissioner Buller, what's been the uptake so far on the interim report and uh, you know the actions there? <laughs> what uptake? <laughs> what action? Uh, the government has, uh, federal government, has given itself money uh, to uh, fund some programming, but that's about it. So those uh, interim recommendations haven't been addressed? Not entirely, if at all. And so what concerns does that bring to your mind now when you're getting ready, if you're not already working on this final report? Well, it raises a lot of concerns for us. Uh, that interim report was groundbreaking in the work that was contained in it. And so, of course, it doubles our concern about framing our recommendations in a way that will be acted upon. Commissioner Audet, did you want to uh, touch on uh, no uptake or a, a lack of uptake on, on an interim report with recommendations you felt could uh, make an impact right away? Or maybe use this opportunity to, to say that they didn't need to wait for the interim report. They don't need to wait for the final report. And I would say this to every government across Canada, including our uh, First Nation, Métis, and Inuit government and municipalities. We don't need to wait for this uh, inquiry to act. So I invite everybody uh, to do so. But to be frank, um, about this interim report, uh, they proposed some measure, I guess, but it was already programmed that exists or, or existed or enhanced. But I believe that there's so much to do right now. Commissioner Ailson, were you expecting there to be a swift action uh, on the interim report or, or action period? Well, we're certainly hoping for it. and. Uh like my colleague Commissioner Odette said, I mean, there's no reason to wait as well. I mean, there have been plenty of recommendations, many of them we summarized in the interim report from other reports, mm. and there's no reason for governments to wait. We're going to step aside for another quick break, and then we'll continue the conversation here with the commissioners for the National Inquiry on Face to Face. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guests this week are three of the four commissioners for the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. And before the break, we were speaking about the interim report and uh, I guess a, a lack of action that's, uh, that's taken place there. We're, we're running short on time here on the show, but also with the, the commission, you need to have your report in uh, by the end of April. Is there uh, any talk amongst yourselves or others of asking for another extension or, or going past that deadline? Uh, I think the short answer is no. The government, the federal government anyway, made it very clear that uh, the election cycle is right. the determinant here uh, and that election cycle isn't going to change. And how disappointing is that? Did it, this well, is it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of polite words to use, but horribly disappointing not only to us but to uh, Indigenous people and, and non-Indigenous people all across Canada. We view this uh, uh, issue or issues of violence against Indigenous women and girls to be so serious mm -hmm. and so important to all Canadians that uh, this national inquiry should have survived an election cycle. If I can add, please, and that's the beauty that we have in this, uh, my new family, that 
even if we have different opinion, the love is there. And for me, if I was able to say, yes, we need to have another extension, uh, an extension and redo that process, uh, I'm sure she would walk with me, I'm sure. Because women deserve, family deserve, and Canada deserve to have something well done, very, you know, uh, in a respectful way. We'll do it. It's going to be a strong report. But can you imagine if we had 24 more months? The family from the north and other groups that weren't able to speak their truth would have the opportunity. You haven't held back in the past on you know, expressing some of the concerns that uh, government has in all of this, but I sense there uh, seems to be a new level of frustration right now. Oh. Would, would that be a good way to characterize it? Uh, maybe more than one new level of frustration. Uh, and why? Well, uh, it's because we understand the importance of our work. We care about the families and survivors we've heard from. We know the trust that they've given us. And uh, as uh, the closer we come to our finish line, uh, the more that weighs on us. Commissioner Olson, what is your hope for the legacy of this inquiry? Um, well, that. Uh, governments and organizations will act on our recommendations, that we will have done honor to uh, the families and survivors mm -hmm. and to our lost loved ones, and that they will be commemorated in the way that they deserve to be, and uh, that there will be real change in terms of uh, the violence uh, that Indigenous women and girls face, and that it will be safer, and uh, that's what I hope for. Chief Commissioner Buller, how do we ensure, how do you ensure that this isn't uh, another one of those reports, uh, which sounds like the interim report as well, that uh, sits on the shelf collecting dust. A lot of our success is going to turn on our recommendations. Uh, and we have to be careful that we word them in such a way that people can grasp them and go forward with them. And by that, I mean uh, that they're clearly stated, that there are deadlines, that there are uh, methods of accountability built in uh, so that there's transparency. Uh, there are ways of wording re uh, recommendations to make them uh, more mobile, if that's the right word. But I want to go back to we were asked to report, huh, to examine and to report. And uh, now, when we do finish, the responsibility goes to you, to every government. So I hope that you will challenge them every day to say, what about your plan of action to implement those recommendations? And I'll walk beside you that day. I hope uh, the Canadian public uh, will challenge them as well as of this course, report course, when I say out, you. Uh, you know, during a, uh, what's going to be an election cycle. Mm. I uh, want to thank all three of you commissioners very much for taking the time yes. to sit down here with us uh, on Face to Face. Mm. If uh, you want to listen to this, uh, this episode and past episodes, they're also available as podcasts, and you can find those at aptn.ca slash face-to-face podcast. I also want to give a special thanks to our crew who worked uh, extra hard this week to ensure that uh, we could pull this together. Commissioners, thank you very much. Uh, that's all the time we have for mm. this episode. I'm Dennis Ward. Have a good night.